kid we got too. Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome back to our Wyoming life. Today, we've got a fun little video in store for you guys as we today, well, actually, we're gonna start it out today and we're gonna finish it up tomorrow. But this evening, we're gonna take a look at some of the hay fields. We're gonna talk about the rain that we've gotten over the last few weeks and what that's gonna do for haying. Then, tomorrow morning, 4 a.m., I get up with Mackenzie and Lincoln and we jump in the car for a 10-hour drive to pick up a brand new addition to the ranch. So all that is coming up today, but we're gonna get things started today with just one quick little construction project. We haven't hayed on the ranch in almost three years. That means I haven't broken out any equipment, I haven't greased anything, nothing. I don't even know if the stuff still works and I'm not even sure if I still know how to run it. Now that is gonna come up and probably here within about the next month because the grass looks great. We've gotten a ton of rain. I'm gonna give you some rain totals here in just a second, but that construction project isn't going away and it all has to do with hay anyway, so we might as well get started there. The construction project itself, super duper simple. We're gonna take a yardstick from Home Depot, this one happens to be. Actually, Matt purchased this when he was here, so we're gonna commandeer it uh, for the purposes we need it for, and a stake. And we are gonna attach these two together and then we're gonna go out into the hay field and drive this stake in the ground so that we can measure the growth of the hay. Yep, that's about as simple as of a construction project as you can get. But this is one that's gonna be essential as we move closer and closer to hang. Let's jump in the gator and head out and take a look and see what the ranch looks like after a few inches of rain. We average about 14 inches of rain per year. Precipitation, I should say, because that's not even rain. That includes uh, snow melt and everything else. So far this year, 2022, as of June 1st, we are looking at about seven inches to this point, which is great. We're ahead of schedule, right? We're halfway through the amount of uh, moisture that we're gonna get for a year by June. That's great. In fact, over the last about, uh, month and a half, we've had almost five inches of liquid precipitation. And that's what's the amazing part, because if you would have asked me two months ago if we were gonna be haying at all this year, I would have said no. But it's not just as simple as, hey, we got rain and now we got grass. Uh, now we need, well, we need more rain, that'd be nice. But we also need sun and heat, and hopefully all that is coming up. We've got more rain due in this weekend. We've got some pretty nice temperatures coming up, and hopefully some sunshiny days, sunshiny days, <laughs> which will uh, which will help the grass grow out here in the pasture. Unfortunately, right now, it doesn't look like much. And that's because we are just heading in to our growing season. Uh, all this rain is great. In fact, uh, the University of Wyoming spent some time out here on the ranch. Now, this was pre-YouTube when we actually did a rangeland management class here on the ranch in about 2015. And some professors from the University of Wyoming came up. And one of them that I got a chance to talk to actually told me that the most important rain that we can receive in this area happens in the third week of April, honestly. So that's good. We had rain then and that's what got this grass a head start. All the other rain that we had with it is what helped out the reservoirs and gave waterfowl a place to hang out. But not only that, 
gave our cows some place to drink, which is super duper important. It also gave a place for turtles to live, and I don't know if the turtles are out yet, but they probably will be within the next few days. In fact, the reservoirs are about the fullest that I've seen them in a few years, at least. And after our last couple of days of rain, where we've gotten, I want to say about an inch and a quarter of rain, we actually have standing water in the fields, which is pretty much unheard of. So that's a good thing, um, although it does uh, make things a little bit muddy. Our RV park is kind of a disaster right now, but it's all good because we'll take moisture where we can get it. But really what we're looking for is these hay fields. Now the pasture grass is gonna do well. Um, the cows, we have less cows than we've had in 10 years, more than that, 20 years probably here. So um, we, we're not worried about pasture grass. We know that that's gonna do great. What we are worried about is what we're gonna feed the cows all winter long and that's where haying really does come in and where it is very, well, it's vitally important at this point. So as we head down towards the hay field, I really like to think back to years past when we did hay and years when we didn't and how frustrating that could be and being able to know that we're going to probably, barring a, an act of God or a natural disaster or something, we're probably going to hay. Uh, this, is a, this is a very good year and I'm happy to have it. This is actually the hay field that we're going to be stopping at today and this is where we're going to kind of get ourselves set up to measure our yield, which is something that we have to do every single year. Look at that. Green, nice, and beautiful. In years past, uh, even the last couple of years, I've come out here and, and literally the grass is this tall in July. So here we are in June, grass is green, it's growing. This is, this is awesome, and I'm very happy to see this. One of the things that we do every single year, though, is we do start measuring yield. And to do that, um, you've seen me do the hula hoop trick, if you followed us for long enough, uh, way back when. And our basic number that we're looking for out here to make this whole thing worth it, make us, you know, make it worth getting out the tractors and the hay equipment, all that kind of stuff, is about 600 pounds per acre is all we really have to get out of this to make it worth cutting. Now, there is kind of the trade-off is if we cut that the cows aren't able to eat it but I think we do need to start worrying about what we're gonna do for uh, winter feed so so before I come out with the hula hoop and start measuring things and look like uh, a little weird uh, we are gonna use our yardstick that we actually built in the shop we're gonna pound that in the ground and that's gonna give us kind of a, a base measurement uh, for what this field's doing so what I, I, you know, this is probably just as good a spot as any. This is a little bit of a low spot that we're in. It's part of the ditch, which is probably gonna grow a little bit faster and everything else. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick just a clump of grass, like this one right here. Now this is brome that's coming up here along with it, but what I wanna do is put that yardstick down so I can see how this grass is growing, what it's doing, uh, when it's gonna head out, and when we need to harvest, most importantly. That gets us close enough. We take a look at that yardstick. Grass growing eight, nine inches up on that yardstick. The other thing that I'm gonna do, and this is strictly for your guys' benefit, is I'm actually gonna set another yardstick out here, and that way I can take pictures as we move through the season of that yard of that yardstick and how this grass grows, kind of give us a cool little time lapse. So get that set up. So now with that set up, I know that I'm going to be taking the same picture every single day 
and we can watch the growth of the grass. And the hope is that uh, it grows over our stake and over our yard stick where we can't even see anything. So we've got about 500 acres of hay ground here on the ranch. Our goal is to average about a ton an acre. We only get one cutting here in Northeast Wyoming because I can guarantee you that as soon as July rolls around, the rain will pretty much dry up. At least that's what's happened in the past. Who knows what's gonna happen in the future. I do like driving out though and seeing the green pastures, the green hay fields. Um, nothing makes you feel better about heading into the year. We're also gonna go down and check a few more reservoirs. Now we're about a mile from the house, a mile and a half or so. Um, we're gonna go back three or four miles, check some other reservoirs that the cows are gonna be working their way down to. Right now, they are actually out of the home pasture. They're in a pasture that we call the cut across, which is where uh, they can move past the hay fields because we don't want them obviously grazing the hay fields. So we have a cut across pasture that's about a hundred and some odd acres. And that pasture allows them to move past the hay fields without grazing them and onto the next pasture in our rotation. understand why kids love playing in mud puddles so much. The grass for us is probably one of the most important things on the ranch. Obviously cows are important, water is important, but the grass is something that if we don't have, we have to purchase. And if we have to purchase, well, it'll, it'll put you bankrupt having to buy hay. So every rancher, I, mean, I don't, you know, I always say that you're a hay farmer first. You're a, you're a grass farmer. You have to take care of the land. You have to farm the grass. You, you have to figure out how to make grass grow. And here in Northeast Wyoming, uh, when we don't have rain, it becomes incredibly difficult. Um, prices of cattle, prices of hay, everything are leading in to put a stranglehold on ranchers and farmers. And it's, uh, it's no fun to deal with. Even the antelope enjoy the nice green grass. Of course, you know, taking it away from cows, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, we're almost all the way down into summer pasture already. We're taking a look at a couple more reservoirs really quick before we head back to the house. I am gonna call it, uh, call it done early tonight because I do have to get up about uh, 3.30 this morning, tomorrow morning and get ready to head out uh, with the kids, like I mentioned earlier, we're going on a little road trip and uh, pick it up. Well, we're picking up a present for Aaron is what we're doing, but uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a, a peek at what she's getting before she even gets it. All the green. <laughs> In fact, by having green out here, we're saving green later on. All right, that's it. I'm going to hang it up for today. We are gonna get a good night's sleep and hit the road in the morning. So I'll see you in the morning. Hey guys, good morning. It is just past four o'clock. Um, we're getting ready to head over to Chamberlain, South Dakota. It's about five hours from here and uh, I'm bringing along two of the kids. Uh, Mackenzie is coming with me and Lincoln is coming with me. Grace isn't coming because she has a summer enrichment this, this year, which is about a 10 day class that happens. It's, uh, it's like a um, a science deal for smart kids. So she got invited to do that. So she's going to be doing that here uh, today. So she's not going to be able to go with us. But Mackenzie and Lincoln are both coming. So it's uh, it's early, like I said. So it's time to wake them up and uh, and get them moving so they can get in the car. They'll probably just pass out, but uh, we're going to get them up and get them out here and and hit the road. Somebody blew. Right. 
Okay, guys, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Hit the road? Yeah. It's still really dark outside. It's four But in the we're morning. getting, yeah, it's really early. And uh, we're going to get a lot of miles put on today, and we're going to go get what? Emus. Emus. Yes. <laughs> are you excited? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's do I it. I will try to express it, but I'm tired. <laughs> Can I? So, oh, wow, super dark. <laughs> How do I turn on the lights on this thing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. How do I turn on the lights? I got a little light there. Not much of an interior light. Uh, so this is our very first uh, road trip that I've ever taken all by myself with the kids. So super exciting. Two kids. Uh, two kids, not all of them. Uh, we have a little bit of breakfast to get us going. This is my new favorite. This is our maple jalapeno flavored beef stick. Um, I'm going to be chomping down on this as we head down the road the sun is just starting to come up and uh, we've got a lot of miles to put on mm -hmm. and some cute little dinosaurs <laughs> pretty much to go and get Mackenzie's my co-pilot here Lincoln's in the back uh, listening to uh, some music and probably gonna fall asleep here no, so he's watching his iPad he's watching his iPad is that what he's doing with his headphones on. with his headphones on all right so we're gonna hit the road and I'm gonna have some maple flavored maple jalapeno and Kenzie's going to have a Pop-Tart. I have beautiful wild berry Pop-Tart. <laughs> <laughs> These you can get on our website, ourwyomonglife.com. Our beef jerky selection is up there. And you can also become a Patreon uh, supporter for $1 per month and get yourself meat and beef and pork directly from the ranch. But uh, beef jerky as well on our website and uh, tons of different flavors. Go and check that out. All right, you ready to hit the road? Let's do it. Kens, we are in South Dakota, and the sun is bright and shining in your eyes. Did you bring sunglasses? No. Oh, you didn't? Did mom leave a pair in here somewhere, maybe? No. Oh, no. We might have to stop and get you some sunglasses. I don't need sunglasses. You don't need sunglasses? I don't need them. Oh, wow. It's uh, 549 in the morning. Lincoln, I think, is passed out still. You haven't taken a nap yet. Are you excited to get, is it emu or emu? I think it's emu. Emu, okay. Emus don't move. Emus don't move. Okay, where did you hear that? YouTube. YouTube, of course. <laughs> you know what we should have done a long time ago? What? Was bought stock in construction cones. Great stock opportunity. My gosh, there's a lot of these things. <laughs> we could be billionaires. Guys, it's just past 7 o'clock. We've made it through Rapid City, South Dakota. We're cruising right along. A lot of ways left to go. About three more hours left or so. Um, are you getting tired, Kenzie? Uh, kinda. Kinda. Lincoln's back there. He took a little nap. Hey, Lincoln, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, buddy. You're way in the back. Oh, there he goes, disappeared. Fell down, where'd he go? Where'd Lincoln go? Where did Lincoln go? He's like peekaboo. He's all gone. Okay, no more Lincoln. <laughs> oh, there he is. Hey, Link. Oh, there he goes again. All right. Okay, I just had to turn on the camera because we are having a very, very in-depth conversation here about dinosaurs because emus are maybe related to dinosaurs. How do you say that? And Emu. 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 They're related to dinosaurs. And then, of course, uh, we started talking about everybody's favorite dinosaur, which is this Triceratops. And Except then Lincoln said his favorite dinosaur is what's your favorite dinosaur, Lincoln? 
T-Rex is Lincoln's favorite dinosaur. Then we started talking about T-Rex having little tiny arms and not being able to pick their own nose. That led us into the fact that T-Rexes have claws, and if they could pick their nose, they'd probably end up poking their brain. But Mackenzie just had a good point. Cows pick their noses. With their tongue. With their tongues. <laughs> oh, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Anyway. How'd you for How'd you forget about that? You see them every day. <laughs> We're wondering, do emus pick their noses? And if they do, how do they do it? We were also talking about dinosaurs having feathers. And dinosaurs with feathers. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about all kinds of good stuff. So dinosaurs with feathers, dinosaurs picking their nose, cows picking their nose. And uh, speaking of which, I think I have a, I have a boogie. <laughs> Use the receipt. <laughs> Use the receipt. <laughs> Minutes. Why can't we just be like YouTubers with editing and you can just snap your fingers and then we'll be there? Alright, snap your fingers. I can't snap my fingers. <laughs> and like that, we're almost there. We're going to stop at McDonald's and that's where we are meeting up with the guy that has the emus. And uh, we're going to make a, a shady little exchange kind of thing going on. Is it shady if you're getting McDonald's dinosaur chickens? <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's dinosaur chickens. No, uh, we are going to make a legitimate business exchange and uh, then we'll be heading back home. With the McDonald's dinosaur chickens. Exactly. Mackenzie also has some emu facts for us that we're going to take a look at on our way home. We'll get them home, we'll get them settled in, but all that is a long ways away because we. Uh, have a lot of miles to put on yet. That's the guy. All right. You hang out here. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. I'm filming this. Get a PE head out. Um, I think they're too short. Uh -oh. They're babies. I saw dad eat it with a pet one. So you have to be in that box. Maybe they are in the box like them. What? They are in the box. Hurry up, you have two children. They are impatient. They get to be in the box. Are we having four? No, we're getting two. But we're going to get this one and then you guys get to pick the other one, okay? Is that cool? Okay. All right, so let me grab this one out. So we're definitely gonna take that one. Okay. Whoop. Floppy. Okay. And then which other one do you want? You get to pick it. The one with the poop on it. The one with the poop on it? This one? This one? All right. There you go. All right. You go in there too. Okay. You got water for him. You, yeah. you were in there for two seconds and yeah. you pooped. Okay, we'll get them water here in a minute. Okay. Are you guys fighting? They get that, yeah. No, they're trying to get out. Yeah. They go over here. See, they all have food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, we have our emus now loaded up in the back, uh, ready to go. I do want to drop a quick shout out to Randy at Spectrum Farms. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. You can go check out his Facebook page and see all the crazy stuff that they do out there from uh, emus to uh, camels and uh, what else they do, skunks, all kinds of crazy pets uh, available, but uh, they do some really cool stuff out there. So be sure to check them out on Facebook, friend them, like them, whatever you need to do. It's Spectrum Farms. Take a look and see if maybe you can find your new emu and do they right have there alpacas? do they do alpacas i don't know that's a very good question i should have asked randy when he was here <laughs> oh well maybe next time okay we're gonna hit the road we've got about five and a half hours before we get home then we're gonna unload these guys and show you how we set them up in the meantime and as we cruise back home kenzie's gonna give you some emu facts 
Okay, so the first fact for um, emus is they love to swim and play in the mud. The second fact is that they are the second biggest bird in the world, and the um, biggest bird is the ostrich. Okay, um, two more facts are they can run up to 30 miles per hour, and they have two eyelids, one for um, protecting um, like any, so they don't get sand in their eye, and another one for blinking. Okay, so the next two um, emu facts for this hour is uh, they have good eyesight and hearing, better than I do, and they have little useless wings because they can't fly, but they still have wings. Another fact is that they are omnivores, which means they eat everything, and they drink um, 2.5 to um, 5 gallons of water a day. two facts. Um, um, emus are the only birds with calf muscles and they can jump up to seven feet. That's the end of our emu facts. Now I'll send it back to my dad at home. Uh, we're here and we're all alive and we're all, well these guys are very well rested. You took a lot of naps Lincoln. Yeah. You took a lot of naps and Kenzie took a couple naps too. I she had to wake up to give you guys your, uh, your ostrich facts or not ostrich facts but emu facts. Boy. All right, you guys ready to go find mom and let her know what's up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi Grace. How was school? Good. Good. We got something for you. I'm excited. Yeah. Grace Link is super excited. Lincoln's putting his shoes on because he uh, got really comfy. <laughs> Did he leave his pants on? Yeah. <laughs> he did leave his pants on. That was a good thing. Everybody slept. Like, we all took a nap. So. Oh, cool. Did you take a yeah. nap? Yeah, I did. A little one. Time I'm just kidding. Oh, you didn't, didn't sit in the back at all? Yeah, because nope. Lincoln always sat. Lincoln she was my co-pilot the whole way. Co-pilot and navigator. Dad, I think we need to stop and get gas. <laughs> Kenzie, we have three quarters of a tank. I don't think it would be a bad idea to stop and get gas. Also, I had to pee. So. <laughs> did Lincoln move up to the middle row? A couple times. <laughs> all right, Lincoln, let's go. What's taking you so He's long? In the back. Is he taking see. another nap? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Where'd you get toys? <gasps> Good, we got two. What's in there? Should we take them in the shop? Yeah. yeah. Can we just hold them? Yeah, I don't know, they'll poop, on, they'll poop on you. <laughs> they'll poop on you. I want home one. Okay, you cannot drop them. Do you need help getting that open? You got it. Hi. They spilled Hi. their food there. Yeah, I see that. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Did you see it snap? They're already dancing. Uh, <laughs> eyes look funny. Hi. Don't let the other one out. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh, hi. It's okay. Hi. Watch your poop on mom. This is your new home. It is your new home. Well, I already had a poop accident with Bean this morning, so. <laughs> you want the other one? What happened? Well, I can only hold one. What happened? Do you want to pet it, Grace? Um, oh, there's poop Bean, on this one. Bean, this is the one that I chose because I had poop on it. Bean was helping Jeff feed the calves, and she was licking a butt, and then she got pooped on. <laughs> you want to get the other one? Here. I don't know if I can hold there. it, though. Yeah, they're very, uh, very, <laughs> very squirrely. Oh. That one is. Dad, you're There you go. I don't want to hold it. I feel like it's going to run away. That one's bigger. <laughs> This one is a little bigger. This is the big one that Kenzie picked. Oh, I picked the big one? Yep. Because the one has the bullseye on its head. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, let's go put them in. So you finally got your emus. I did. We actually had to look it up. It's not emu, it's emu. At least according to Australians. <laughs> and you know, however many Australians can't be wrong. So where are we going? We're gonna go get some kale from the high tunnel. Apparently, they really, really, really like kale. I don't know why, but they do. And the vitamins involved with kale, do you know what vitamins are in kale? All of them. <laughs> well, all of them are really good for the emus. So we're gonna grab some kale and see if they go crazy for it. We've got them put in their cage already, or what do you call it? It's, they're in the brooder. They're in the brooder, at least for a couple days. And, uh, because we then, got more chickens and turkeys coming. Yeah. <laughs> I think chicken math, chicken math like took on a whole new level. <laughs> this year you went a little crazy. Not only 
did we get more meat chickens because there's a hundred of those waiting. Well, there's, well, there's two, a hundred. There's, there's a hundred two wait, rounds yeah. of meat chickens. So there's a bunch of them waiting to be butchered. We got a bunch of new ones. We've got chickens and turkeys due this week. Yeah, they should ship today. And you just got 100 pound dinosaurs. I know. <laughs> for the ranch, Lincoln was very excited. He said, "I always wanted a dinosaur." <laughs> this is as close as we can get. This is as close as we can do. We did have a long discussion about how some dinosaurs might have had feathers. So yeah. we also had another discussion about how a T-Rex picks his nose. <laughs> that was a good one too. So we found a way, a good use for kale. Hopefully they really like it because we have lots of it. Do you think they like rainbow chard? I think they like all kinds. Well, we can try different things. I don't know. I was thinking uh, when they get bigger, we can see which kind of, well, that one's dirty, what kind of kale they like because I got three different kinds of kale. They make three different <laughs> kinds of kale? I think they probably make more than three different kinds, but I have three kinds. Like one type of kale so wasn't like enough. A purple kale, a green kale that had a leaf on it. And they probably like this one the best because this one's called dino kale. Ooh. <laughs> so, All right. So since they're dinosaurs, We'll do that. Have you thought about any names yet? Oh, no. I have to get to know them. Well, and we don't know if they're male or female, so we could have Thelma and Louise. <laughs> we could have Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, that's a good one. I like Bonnie and Clyde. Let's give them nice names. Well, Bonnie and Clyde were nice people. Yeah. For a while. <laughs> um. We, how do we even, say, when they get bigger, how do we even know if they're a boy or a girl until one of them lays an egg? Well, that's one way. Or you follow them into the public restroom. See which one they use. Does anybody want some kale? Hi. What did you get there? A goat. A goat. Did you get a toy? Yeah. Did they remember you? Mm-hmm. You're sad horns. that Grace couldn't come. I want to go, but I never know. You, you got to go to school. I don't want to go to school tomorrow. You're going to school tomorrow. Don't want to. They don't want my kill. Just can break you just it. put some down? Good idea. I read that you can put it in the water. Do you hold my goat? I'll hold your goat. <laughs> Good I'm so happy you guys are here. When are they going to become friendly? Well, we got to work on that every day. We got to work on them being friendly. And when they get a little bigger, we're gonna take them to the yard, and we're gonna have playtime. Yeah. And Bean will. Bean's gonna play with them. Bean will have to meet them. Or maybe she can lick their butts and get pooped on. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. We now have the closest thing to a dinosaur that we're probably ever going to get on the ranch. And you know what? I don't mind. Um, I think these guys will be a lot of fun. They'll definitely help us educate people um, and bring people in to educate about where their food comes from and, of course, the families behind it. I'm going to lock these guys in for now. And I guess over the next year or so our goal is to friendly them up to get them used to people and when they're six feet tall they aren't as cranky as some other emus that i've seen for me it's the end of the day it's four o'clock was way too early if you do me a favor head on over to the website rwhamminglife.com check out our beef jerky on there that maple jalapeno mm, so good also my other favorite teriyaki check that one out as well it's our wildinglife.com lots of other good stuff on there including t-shirts just like well this is a hoodie but just like this one and uh beef pork all that good stuff on the website all right there and all direct 
from the ranch. I'll see you next time. Until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Thank <laughs> you.